The experiments are over, and astronomer Roger Angel needs a critical evaluation of his proposed space sun shield. Basil Singer heads for the University of Victoria in British Columbia, Canada. Here, researchers have used supercomputers to see if the sun shield could make a difference. Professor Andrew Weaver is a lead author of the latest report on global warming by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. At Basil's request, he's projected a scenario for the next 100 years based on climate change continuing at the current rate. As you see, as we start, it's warming everywhere. And by the end of this century, you see, it's about three degrees warming with sea level rise a little bit over a foot. Weaver's IPCC report suggests that by 2020, climate change could cause a catastrophic 50% drop in agricultural production in parts of Africa. And NASA studies show increasing temperatures and rising sea levels put New York City at increased risk of severe hurricane damage. So how much of a difference would the sunshield make if it was operational during this period? The movie going from the year 2007, it takes off and starts to cool, actually, quite dramatically during the implementation period. In fact, it's cooling so rapidly, it's taking us back to pre-industrial temperatures. So this isn't just putting the brakes on global warming. This is putting global warming into reverse. That's correct. If work was to begin immediately, Roger Angel believes the sun shield could be operational by 2040. Things that take a few decades are not that futuristic. It's not immediate, but at this stage, I think we need to look at all our options. Temperatures would drop, as Weaver's model predicts, but only with a simultaneous and significant reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. Without that, the benefits of the sun shield would cancel out before the end of the century. Climate scientists are just beginning to weigh options like the sun shield as we contemplate an uncertain future. If you were to put in this much effort, maybe we should just be building wind turbines and solar cells and things like that and not bother building these huge satellites. But I don't think it's completely off the charts. I think it's off the charts this century. What we have to be prepared for is that many of these experiments aren't going to work. This is the way science and engineering progress. You build something, you try it, it doesn't work, you try it again. This is sometimes called learning by doing. We're not doing, and therefore we're not learning. There's some really interesting questions involved in, in whether shading the sun will do what you want, other than keep global average temperature down, which would help, but it isn't everything. We don't really know what will happen to the Earth system if we change the temperature to bring us back to pre-industrial temperatures. We don't know what other effects we'll have on the planet. This is a last-ditch effort because you can be sure that when you do something like that, you cause large unintended consequences that we only very, very dimly understand. And it is hubris to think that we know enough to do that unless we find ourselves in the soup and we have no choice. But researchers like Roger Angel view these geoengineering projects as high-tech safety nets we can't afford to dismiss. There are things with climate change that are irreversible. It's worth thinking about whether we got some insurance policy. And the one thing that we can do to prevent the Earth heating up is to reduce the amount of solar energy arriving at the Earth. The space sunshield is just one of many geoengineering alternatives emerging from the scientific community. While the effort to cut our carbon emissions continues, many experts believe we need to consider these strategies to make the right decisions at the right time for the planet we call home.